food processing facility sanitation is an integral part of good manufacturing practices. Effective sanitation aids in ensuring the wholesomeness, safety, and quality of shell eggs. The negative impacts on food safety and egg quality are a result of microbial growth. Research has shown that ineffective cleaning and sanitation practices or programs can lead to reduced quality duration or potential product contamination. Residual microorganisms can lead to egg spoilage or foodborne illness. Most of this training series will focus on the United States Department of Agriculture Agricultural Marketing Service Pre-Operational Sanitation Inspection Expectations. However, remember that the Food and Drug Administration has oversight of consumer shell eggs in the United States as stated in 21 CFR 117. Additionally, customers, accrediting organizations such as Safe Quality Food, British Retail Consortium Global Standard, and others, as well as state and local regulatory agencies, may have additional facility sanitation expectations that can impact your facility. AMS sanitation requirements are meant to protect the integrity of the USDA grade mark by requiring additional sanitation expectations at facilities that utilize AMS voluntary grading services. To meet these goals, AMS inspectors will assess for voluntary grading program requirements during the pre-operational sanitation inspection and throughout processing operations by utilizing organoleptic inspection assessments. While AMS may review microbial test results as part of certain export programs, AMS does not conduct nor require swabbing or biological testing during routine sanitation assessments. So what is organoleptic inspection? Organoleptic inspection assessments include sight, smell, and touch. However, microbial growth will not always be seen, smelled, or felt. Critical areas are defined as equipment with potential surface contact with eggs or come in contact with wash water or air blown to dry the eggs. Non-critical areas are defined as areas that are not likely to imminently affect product quality. Non-critical does not mean it is not important. Non-critical unsatisfactory conditions should be addressed after the processing line has been started, unless unable to safely do so during processing. In this module, the non-critical areas of packing systems, including overwrapping, case packing, case sealing, and palletizing will be identified and discussed. The critical components that entail cartons, cases, and overwrap films will be discussed in the storage areas module. Eggs that are to be packaged and sealed with plastic wrap before packing will undergo an overwrapping that loosely encapsulates the package with a plastic film, then heat shrinks the film to seal the container. The overwrap system consists of a plastic film application, a heat tunnel that uses steam or dry heat to shrink and seal the film, and a belt that transports the package through the overwrapping process. Components to view during overwrap system assessment are belts, framing and external panels, curtains, wiring and control panels, fans. An alternative packing method for overwrapping is strapping cartons together to make a larger final package. The process of applying plastic strapping to the cartons is usually accomplished with a specialized strapping machine. The sanitation assessment of these machines is mostly limited to external panels and surfaces. While this system does not normally break eggs, if breakage does occur, it is likely that egg meat could leak into the internal components of the strapping machine. These machines have panels that may be removed to assess internal wiring and components. From what we see of this strapping machine, it is satisfactorily clean. When viewing this overwrap machine, there are two areas that would need closer inspection. 
First, we see the white framing around the heat tunnel entrance is discolored. This is very common due to the amount of heat from these machines. Discoloration should not be cause for an unsatisfactory finding. Secondly, we see discoloration around the base of the wrapping machine. If this is simply staining or flecking paint, it would not be cause for an unsatisfactory finding. However, if the discoloration is rust, mold, or mildew, this would be an unsatisfactory finding in a non-critical area. Curtains on heat tunnels may become damaged from heat or may collect melted plastic from packaging. Facilities will, at times, trim the curtains so the packaging film does not come in contact with them. As long as the curtains are maintained in a clean fashion, trimming should not be cause for an unsatisfactory finding. The current example is a satisfactorily cleaned, non-critical area. While the heat tunnel in this picture is satisfactorily cleaned, we see discarded film and film rolls have been left on the floor around the equipment. This is an unsatisfactory, non-critical finding. The packaging should be discarded in proper receptacles. When cardboard egg cases are used, formed egg cases must be prepared for the cartons or flats. Case formation may be accomplished either manually or mechanically. When mechanical cardboard case formation equipment is present, USDA will assess the equipment as part of pre-operational sanitation inspection. As an alternative to hand packing, automatic case packers are used to transfer flats of eggs and cartons of various sizes into cases. These systems will usually have components that accept cases from one end and the packaged egg from the other. Robotic arms will place the egg packages in the case before the case is transitioned to the case belt. Usually, the panels of automatic case packers will be clear, allowing for easy assessment. When unintentional spillage of eggs from their packaging occurs, egg meat has the potential to get on various components within the packer. Components to view during automatic case packer assessment are case belts, framing, external panels, carton belts, robotic grippers or arms, and wiring and sensors. The internal components of this automatic case packer have egg meat remaining on the frame, structural components, and belting. Upon closer inspection of the robotic arm, eggshell and yolk debris remain on the carton gripping components. This is unsatisfactory for the non-critical case packing equipment. However, because of the egregious amounts of yolk and shell remaining on the framing and arm and the potential negative impact on the packaging, this will be elevated to a critical finding that must be corrected before this individual case packer is used. This does not prevent the start of washing and grading operations as long as this packer is not used until it is thoroughly cleaned. Once the cases, or other master containers, have been filled, they are either placed on a belt that conveys the product to another location or directly palletized. These belts may be constructed of interlocking plastic links, reinforced cloth, metal rollers, or other materials. In addition to general dust and grime accumulation, egg spillage is common on case belts. If not immediately cleaned, this may result in broken eggshells and egg meat working its way into various conveyor components. Components to view during case belt assessment are belts or rollers, drive systems, which include tensioner rollers, tension belts, motors, framing and guards, step bracing, if present, and the packing bench. This is a view of a rubberized belt that shows wear to the point that it has been worn completely through, resulting in holes in the belting. As long as this belt is satisfactorily cleaned and does not have buildup of egg meat or foreign material, it is not cause for an unsatisfactory finding. This is a satisfactory, non-critical finding. 
When eggs are spilled from cases onto belts, especially textured, rubberized belts, egg meat has a tendency to adhere to the textured surface and can be difficult to remove without thorough scrubbing. The belt shown here has copious amounts of egg meat remaining in the textured surface and is an unsatisfactory, non-critical finding. Beyond visible egg meat on the upper surfaces, eggs spilt on case belts can often work their way into crevices and the underside of the belt. A proper organoleptic assessment includes visually looking under the belts and assessing any notable smells. Here we see residual debris that has been on the equipment long enough to develop a foul odor. At the point that foul odors are detected, this would become a critical, unsatisfactory finding and would need to be addressed before processing begins. An overview of this system including the belt, case bench, and steps show this to be satisfactorily cleaned with no visible debris on the belt system. However, when looking underneath the belting system at the framing and legs, we see eggshells and packing debris remain on the floor. This is an unsatisfactory, non-critical finding that should be recorded in the floor section of the sanitation report. We will cover these areas more in depth in a separate module. Cardboard cases are usually sealed to prevent the eggs from falling out. Sealing can be accomplished either manually or mechanically using various methods. While some facilities may still use staples to seal the bottom of cases before packing, the majority of facilities use taping or gluing to accomplish sealing. Again, egg spillage can be a common occurrence in these areas, resulting in the internal components becoming soiled with egg meat. Components to view during case taping and gluing equipment assessment might be external framing and panels, internal wiring and components under the case level, transfer belts or systems, tape or glue dispensing components. In systems that use glue to seal cases, excess glue dripping into the internal components may build up and accumulate dust, grime, and egg meat. Finished cases or other master containers are unitized or palletized after processing for storage and transportation. Pallet stacking has often been done by manual stacking. However, robotic pallet stacking equipment is becoming more prevalent. Robotic pallet stacking systems can vary from a single robotic arm with pallets placed around it or it may include multiple robotic components including track systems. While USDA will generally not assess individual components of pallet stacking systems, assessment will include a general overview of the area to make sure the area is well maintained, free of trash and debris, and has no evidence of egg spillage. Pallet wrapping is done to keep pallets from shifting and spilling during storage and transportation. This can be accomplished by either manual or automated wrapping systems. Pallet wrapping may occur with standalone units or with mobile robotic wrappers. Similar to palletizing areas, USDA will generally not assess individual components of pallet wrapping systems. Assessment will include a general overview of the area to make sure the area is well maintained, free of trash and debris, and has no evidence of egg spillage. Notice how in addition to there being no packaging debris or clutter, the paper dividers are also neatly stacked. This lends to a generally clean appearance of the entire area and is a satisfactory non-critical finding. This shows a satisfactorily clean view of a pallet wrapping area. Notice how the floors are free of debris. The film wrapping has been neatly sorted and the trash container does not have trash spilling around it. Also, the labeling station is well maintained. Discolorations on the floor and metal ramp do not constitute unsatisfactory findings unless they are due to spillage of egg meat or other foreign material. The floor and metal ramp around this wrapping system has debris including wood pieces from pallets, 
plastic scraps, and other debris from the processing day remaining, and is an unsatisfactory finding. There are many styles and configurations for egg movement systems. It is important to familiarize yourself with each egg processing system you encounter to ensure the egg movement systems are effectively evaluated before processing begins each day. Keep in mind, in any system, egg contact areas and associated components are critical.